Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Donna Silva and I have a special guest today. My guest is Lisa Freitas with Golden Eagle Mortgage. She's not only a dear friend, but my preferred lender. So Lisa, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. And before we get started, Lisa, would you mind telling everybody a little bit about yourself and why you got into the lending business? Sure. So I've been in the business for over 16 years, initially started as a loan processor, um, worked in that realm for many years on the broker side and then after the crash on the banking side. Um, because of you, I was introduced to Pauline at Golden Eagle Mortgage and transitioned into an originator. Um, why I do what I do, I love to help people. Um, it truly is a passion of mine to help people uh, see their dream in owning a home. And I know the importance of it. You know, my parents were one of the first to own a home in our family. So um, having that stable home, when I seen other people who didn't have that, um, it really set the foundation for our family and I wanna do that for other families. Just so you know, this is going to be part one of a three-part series regarding three different loan types that are available to home buyers out there. So Lisa, we're just gonna jump right in and get started. Right now we're gonna be discussing conventional loans. So why don't you tell us what a conventional loan is? So a conventional loan is a straightforward loan. Um, you can acquire them from banks, credit unions, or mortgage companies. Um, they are backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. It is not insured or guaranteed um, by the federal government like FHA, USDA, or VA loan. So what would be a, an ideal credit score for a conventional loan? Because I know that there are different credit score requirements, correct? Yes. So the minimum credit score you need for a conventional loan is a 620 score. Okay. Um, you know, so there's more flexibility with the government-backed loans. Um, but ideally, you want to be in a conventional loan. Even if you start with USDA or FHA, you want to eventually get into a conventional loan. Why would you want to? To uh, get rid of mortgage insurance. Um, with an FHA, you're going to carry that mortgage insurance. Um, okay. Once you have 20% equity in your home, um, you'll want to move on to a conventional loan to remove that mortgage insurance. Okay. So how does one know if they have 20% equity in a home to be able to remove? You can always reach out to your real estate agent just to, you know, check the value on your property. You can reach out to myself and I can look into it. You can call your uh, servicing lender directly and just say, you know, I'm, I, it looks that I have the equity in my home or can you see if I have the equity in my home to then um, get into a conventional loan. Okay. So that shouldn't cost a, a home buyer anything, correct? No, usually doesn't. Um, okay. If you do go from an FHA loan to a conventional loan, you are going to have to refinance. So you're going to have mm -hmm. your basic minimal cost of a refinance, but long term, it'll make sense to do that. So Lisa, can you break down um, the minimum down payments for each property type when obtaining a conventional loan? Yes. So for a conventional loan for a primary home, for first time home buyers, it can be as low as 3%, um, in general 5%. Of course, anything less than 20% is going to require mortgage insurance. For a second home, it's going to be 10%. And for an investment property, um, as low as 15% down. So what qualifies um, a home buyer for the conventional loan in particular? Um, really just having that uh, 620 credit score, um, having at least 3 or 5% down, depending on what you qualify for. Um, of course, income, uh, assets, all those need to be in line. But And with the conventional loan, you're not limited to just buying a primary residence. You can buy an investment property, a second home, or your, you know, your primary home. Do you find that most um, buyers, do they pull from equity from their home to get that percentage for the second home? Yeah, I mean, home. it really, it's case by case. I mean, every okay. borrower is going to have, you know, whether it be pulling from their primary to utilize to buy another property, you know, what or they save to invest, um, you know, it really depends. Some people pull from their 401k. There's a lot of different, some people are gifted funds, and you can use gifted funds for a conventional loan as well. Oh, nice. And then, uh, so you can, though, help 
homeowners who decide maybe they want to refi, pull some cash out mm -hmm. for that secondary mm -hmm. home yeah. or investment? Mm -hmm. I can definitely help um, buyers, you know, utilize the equity from uh, their primary home to pull from there to utilize to buy another property. Um, we have options of HELOCs. A lot of people are using those right now because they don't want to touch their first because they have a really low <laughs> rate. <laughs> so um, utilizing that HELOC to access the equity is a great option. Okay. And the HELOC is stands for? Home Equity Line of Credit. Okay. And so what do you feel with conventional loans is the biggest misconception? The biggest mis misconception is that you need to have 20% down. Um, a lot of people don't realize that they have the option even to go as low as 3% down if you're a first-time home buyer. Um, and so really when we get a new file, we're going to look at all options for a, a borrower mm -hmm. to see what best fits their needs. Um, are they a first-time home buyer? Do they have the option to go down to 3%? Um, you don't need 20% to get a conventional loan. So... But they will pay that PMI anything under that 20%. Correct. Correct. So if they don't have the 20% down, they will pay PMI. But for a borrower who has higher credit scores, the PMI is going to be a lot lower than an mm -hmm. FHA loan. Or sometimes opposite. Sometimes we are looking at a file, they have a lower credit score. Maybe they do have 10% down. But when we're looking at the options, it makes more sense for the FHA loan. So we're always going to look at all options and put the buyer um, in the best loan that fits their needs. Right. So yeah. somebody can say, well, I really wanted a conventional, but the conventional just may not fit for them at the moment. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the whole thing of going through the pre-approval process to know what your options are and know what loan best fits, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to do that, it's no cost to the buyer, right? If somebody just wants to meet with you mm -hmm. and get this information that you're providing mm -hmm. for us today, yeah. there's no cost to yeah, that, Yeah, there's no cost at all to go through the pre-approval process. Um, sometimes there's a small fee for just a, a pre-approval credit report to be pulled. But other than that, there's no cost at all. So I always say, if you have the goal of wanting to purchase a home, whether it be your first home, an investment property, a second home, call me ask me questions. That's what I'm here for, to be a resource um, to then direct you in and guide you to reach your goals. And then when we're getting back to just talking about uh, conventional loans in general, mm -hmm. um, I know we kind of touched on the refinancing. Mm -hmm. um, so home buyers they can refinance the loan, right? That they get with you originally, mm -hmm. um, would they go to you or go to their servicer, their mortgage servicer? You would contact me if you're looking to refinance. Um, of course, you would refinance to pull equity out of your home, to you know change the terms of the loan, the rate of the loan. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why you'd refi. Um, so you could contact me at any time and I could go over those options with you. Okay. So say somebody wants to put a family member on mm -hmm. the loan. Um, mm -hmm. Say somebody, a single person purchases a home mm -hmm. on their own. Two years later, they're still in the home. They get married. Can they put their spouse on that loan or is that a refinance involved? Yeah, they would have to refinance to add an additional borrower to the loan. Okay. Um, but of course, there's options to put them on title if you would like to do that. Okay, and that they could do with the title company, mm -hmm. correct? They yes. don't necessarily need yeah, to they come don't need to, contact to you that. or myself. Correct. So Lisa, what would you say would be the um, advantages to a conventional loan? Some of the advantages are higher loan limits, flexibility in property types. Um, if you have 20% down, you're gonna avoid that mortgage insurance. And sometimes just the overall cost is less um, with the conventional loan. So a lot more flexibility um, with the conventional loan. Okay. So on the flip side, what would be the cons or disadvantages of a conventional loan? I would say the disadvantages are you have to, there are stricter requirements. You know, you have to have a 620 credit score. Um, if you put less than 20% down, there is mortgage insurance. Um, if you have a lower credit score, sometimes you have a higher rate. So there are a little bit of disadvantages in that realm, but for the most part, 
conventional is a really good option. So Lisa, another question I get asked a lot of times, especially from buyers, first time home buyers in particular, mm -hmm. um, does income have anything to do with the type of loan that a buyer would qualify for? It doesn't. So okay. with the conventional loan, it does not, it is not a factor. Um, so it is important to reach out to me so I can look at your personal situation to see what loan best fits your needs. Okay. Lisa, I'd like to thank you again for joining me today. And um, if anybody would like to contact Lisa in regards to any of the loan types that she's going to be discussing or any information that she provided today, um, her information will be in the description below. So go ahead and take a look there. And don't forget to follow us for part two and part three. If you like this content, be sure to give us a follow and subscribe.